was just doing little things every day. And and that was the whole thing with my makeover as well. Like, you know, the the way that I look at it is if you're going to reinvent yourself or do anything like that, you, you just take baby steps because otherwise you're going to fall down in a heap. You're, you know, you know, just one week get something that you're doing every single day and then the next week bring in something else. The next week bring in something else and celebrate small victory. Hey midlifers, welcome to the Midlife Makeover Show. Are you ready to break free from your mundane midlife? Are you feeling trapped in a vicious cycle of rinse and repeat days? No matter if you're experiencing a divorce hangover, job burnout, or you just have the midlife blues, I got you. Hey, I'm Wendy, your hostess of the Midlife Mostess. I too was hit by midlife like a freight train. I too felt stuck in the same dull chapter. I wanted the clarity of how to create a new life beyond divorce and the courage to leave an unfulfilling career. But I kept telling myself that I wasn't worthy and it was just easier to stay in my comfort zone until I found a little secret, the freedom to live my life my way. In this podcast, you will learn how to achieve a vibrant midlife mind and body, how to create solid relationships through love and loss, and how to create an awesome second half of life. Grab your grande latte, pop in your earbuds, and let's get this midlife party started. As you know, midlife is a bustling time. We manage households, nurture relationships, advance careers, and raise children. These responsibilities, while fulfilling, can sometimes drain your energy and diminish your personal strengths. To help you reawaken those dormant powers and embrace the superhero that you truly are, I created the Superhero Quiz at MySuperheroQuiz.com. This fast, free, and fun quiz will help you discover which superhero mirrors your strengths and personality. Plus, you'll receive a detailed guide tailored to your superhero profile, helping you to harness your strengths and soar to new heights. Just head over to MySuperheroQuiz.com and embrace the superhero within you. Welcome back to the Midlife Makeover Show. Today, we are thrilled to be joined by Belinda Coker, a true adventurer and storyteller whose life is a beacon of inspiration for women over 50. Oh, yeah. Belinda's journey has taken her from the challenges of solo motherhood and navigating life post-menopause to a globe-trotting career that's filled with rich experiences. Now she channels her adventures into empowering others through her blog, which chronicles her transformation from a stressed businesswoman, been there, done that, to a jubilant trailblazer. I don't know why I said it that way. (laughs) Maybe because our guest has the most adorable accent ever. In today's episode, Belinda will share the invaluable lessons she's gathered from each mile trekked from wild camping to traversing the scenic Tahoe Rim Trail. Join us today as Belinda unpacks the backpack of her life, inspiring us to see the outdoors as not just a place for physical exploration, but as a vast landscape for personal empowerment and rejuvenation. Her journey is a powerful reminder of the transformative impact of stepping outside our comfort zones. Y'all know I am very pro stepping outside of your comfort zone and into nature's embrace at any stage of life. Please welcome Belinda to the show. Thank you, Wendy. Nice to have Nice to be here. <laughs> It's funny. This is the first show I've done since I've been back in Madeira, Portugal. Normally, the scene behind me would be my RV. So <laughs> this is funny to say. I'm like, oh my god, look at this big kitchen. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, you and I have a lot in common with all these yeah. adventures and going to yeah. amazing places. And, and oh and my god, around. Yep. Yes. Absolutely. And, you know, and, and I, it's quite funny because, you know, I, I call myself a digital nomad and I think digital nomads are supposed to be cute uh, 20-somethings. And, you know, like, like the cool people, you know, sitting in the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the cafes and here I am sort of, you know, like like the old one. 
<laughs> yes, exactly. We're like, we're yeah. the new 50. We're the new digital yeah. nomad. I know. Yeah. Isn't yeah. it great? Yeah. Well, you know, once I, once my children finished school, I was, and became young adults, I, I was in a position to be able to do this. And I said to them, you know, I will fly you over to wherever I am and we will have a one-on-one time for like, you know, maybe a two-week or a four-week holiday. My daughter came and um, spent a lot of time with me when I was in Mexico, say, Alita. And um, with that, I just get one-on-one time with my children. If I was to go back to Australia, not only is the time zone really difficult, but they've got uni, they've got parties, they've got friends, they've got, you know, and I'd, I'd kind of see them like ships passing in the night. And so... Yes, it's a, that it's is a such great a good lifestyle. Point. Yeah, that is yeah. such a good point because I was telling a friend about that, that, you know, a, a lot of people will not actually move away from their kids or their grandkids because then they feel like, okay, I should be there all the time. And you find that you're not with them that much. And then no. when you do get together, it's like, okay, for a quick dinner because everyone's busy doing their thing. But yeah. now what's nice, like, as a matter of fact, I just met all of my three kids um, in Texas just for a yeah. weekend, but we, it was 48 hours of so much uh, yeah. fun. Where yeah. as opposed to like, if I had, we were all living in that same town together or something, we wouldn't have that. Like it would just be like yeah. bits and pieces and kind of scattered and same thing. Yeah. I'm like, I love, I want my kids to come to Madeira and experience being yeah. here and just yeah. having dedicated time together. So yeah, really, it's like, yeah, going to explore the world doesn't mean that you're like leaving everyone behind. Heck, they can come to you and have, yeah. a, have an even better time. <laughs> And the good thing is, is that my children are very well traveled anyway. So they're, you know, for them to sort of, you know, get on a plane and, you know, and, and, you know, last year, all three of them were outside of Australia. My daughter was in the UK and I had two children in Canada. So, um, you know, two two of my kids were doing the ski season um, along with all the other Australians. (laughs) Yeah. And um, so, yeah, so it, it, it works out really well. And then I say, well, you know, um, how about we all meet in Thailand? Anyone's keen? Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> so, of course, of course they're key, but you know, and so yes. it, it kind of does work. I mean, when I, when grandchildren start arriving, you know, I'll, I'll yes. rethink, you know, rethink this whole thing. And, um, but for now it's perfect. And that's another good point because it doesn't mean like if you leap into something new or you go on some crazy adventure, you want to go live in Europe for a while or wherever that doesn't mean it's permanent. You can always revisit, you know, I'm kind of like in this new phase of, I just do the next 90. I plan the next 90 days and that's it. (laughs) You know, because I feel like if you try to plan too much in your life, then there's all these expectations. And besides so many things can happen towards like, okay, wait, that didn't, that didn't work out as planned. But it's nice to like maybe every 90 days or so you kind of check in with yourself like, okay, is this working out? Okay, I'm digging it. I'll keep going. Or maybe I need to pivot and move to something else. But yeah, that doesn't mean that like things change later on in life. If someone gets sick, God forbid, or something like that, you might have to, you know, make a change. So who knows? Exactly. I mean, I had great, you know, expectations that I would go and live in you know, Ecuador for two years. And, you know, and I I got the two year, you know, visa and, and I got there and I thought, actually, I don't think I want to be here. (laughs) So it it didn't, it didn't quite work out that way. Um, So yes, uh, but but it was, it was fine. It was, it was fun for, you know, four months, five months, but yeah, 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 exactly. And, and I think back to when I was RVing, you know, I did the solo RV thing for about a year And I can remember right before I went to buy that RV in Nashville, Tennessee, and I was like, oh, my God, what am I doing? And my friend had said to me, she's like, you know what, Wendy, if you don't do this, you'll be pissed at yourself. But she's like, but if you do it and you don't like it, that's fine. You can always change your mind and do something else later. And the same thing of living in Portugal. I didn't know if I would like living in Europe and I gave it a try. I was like, okay, let me go there for a few months. And then went back to the States and went back again. And 
I love it, obviously, because I'm here again, you know, yeah. apply for citizenship and I actually got it. So that's pretty cool. Wow. But yeah. yeah. So you never, you never know what life will bring you if you, yeah. you know, unless you really leap out there and try. Yeah. And open, open yourself out to any opportunity. I mean, really. I mean, yeah. I didn't realize, I kind of thought I would have a hiking blog, uh, mm-hmm. well, a year, a, a year, a year ago, I decided to start writing the, the hiking blog. Had you and, always been a writer? Uh, not really, no, no, mm-hmm. no. But, but the thing is, with my, with my writing, it's more so informative like it's mm. more so right okay so now you've got to do that and then you do that and then you do that and then you do that I mean that's it's it's quite instructional by yeah. by by writing like I you know it's it's like if I was if I had a food blog I would say right okay we're going to make spaghetti bolognese you need this 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 and this and then you do da 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 and um who cares what I was doing earlier earlier on today? Who cares? You know, like all the you know all the fluff that comes on a food blog. You know, like who cares? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I, I, I would go straight into the recipe. Oh, so and and I probably you know would probably have a very low you know SEO. <laughs> You're like, let's just catch the, let's bake the damn cake, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so so let's go back to Belinda of 2020. Tell tell okay. everyone what was Belinda like um, before you like really embarked in doing a lot of this. What what was Belinda like back then? Okay, so she was quite she was quite stressed out. Um, I had been a um, a solo mother for um, probably ten years. Mm. No, probably about about eight years, and um, I had made the choice that I was not going to bring another man into the relationship while my children are doing the final years of school. I just really didn't want that disruption. So I was there 100% for my children. You know, yes, I did have a partner, but it wasn't it wasn't a live in with me with my children, and that and that was really important to me. So. Um, but the, um, the sit, uh, I'm just trying to say it in such a way that I'm not going to put anyone down, but I, <laughs> I, I, uh, the, the person I had partnered up was a very, you know, led a very sedentary lifestyle, um, probably a lot older before his time. Mm. And I, um, we drank a lot of wine. Like we used to go to the wine merchant on a Friday for wine tasting and come back with all these bottles of wine. And I can remember on the Monday just feeling all the sugar running around my oh, body. Yes. Thinking, oh, yes. this is so bad for me. And I, you know, and we'd go out uh, on the weekend and I'd, I'd see hikers. And I, I'd done quite a lot of hiking in New Zealand, you know, growing up. And over there, it's called tramping. So America, it's backpacking. Um, New Zealand, it's tramping. And um, everywhere else, it's hiking. So it all means kind of like the same thing. Um, so I, I kind of knew what they were doing. Um, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd been there. I'd, I'd, I'd gone out. I'd, you know, in New Zealand, there's some amazing hikes. Mm. And, and I, I remember saying to my partner, look, you know, I really want to do this. And he goes, oh, but, you know, this and that, and, you know, you get dirty and there's no showers. And I remember looking at him going, uh, no, 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 no. That's, the, you know, we're, we're, we're not reading the same book here. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, COVID came around and COVID was my out. Um, mm. And now, and, and don't get me wrong, this person was absolutely lovely, absolutely lovely, but just, just different, just not, we weren't, we weren't reading the same book. And I was overweight. I think all that wine and food and all that sort of thing, like I was unfit and overweight. And I remember looking at myself in the mirror um, and I just remember going, <laughs> what? <laughs> you know, like, like this is like, we, we need to turn something around here. And so I basically COVID came and we were, and, um, Australia was very, very strict, but um, 
uh, Queensland, my my state, was was quite uh, it was quite easy going. So we were actually allowed to go off and hike. All the other states in Australia, you could only go five kilometers away from your house. They were wow. that big. It was super strict. And I also wasn't, we weren't allowed to leave the country either. So they only allowed 20,000 people per year to leave the country. And if you did leave the country, your chances of being able to get back were very, very slim. So I, I couldn't do that. So I was actually trying to work in the American market at 2 a.m. in the morning, you know, you know, trying to make the, you know, the, uh, the time zone. So I was this. Uh, I was doing that, and I was um, not looking, not looking and feeling my best. So mm. I just went straight in, doing, um, you know, hot yoga, um, you know, you know, stretching, or, you know, any anything that I could to make myself better. You know, just to mm. clean clean myself out I I got an old house and I literally gave it a makeover and it was really empowering and I um so I went out and I bought a pair of hiking boots and I joined a local hiking group and um this was actually when I was I was still a little bit overweight and I can remember it was it was it was quite a quite a long hike probably about 17 kilometers but very steep down, up and up, down and up a, a gully. Um, if any Australians are listening, it's the Worry Circuit. And I can remember it was one of the hardest things I had ever done. And I almost died. And I was just like, <laughs> and I got home <laughs> and I was just like, wow, I just did that, you know. And, and um, you know, a few months later, that was, that was just a bit of my morning exercise. You know, I'd just go there and, you know, you know, do it just like that as, you know, part of part of a, a morning routine. <laughs> so, Had you been into the outdoors before that? Yes. So <laughs> when I was um, when I was growing up, probably until about my mid 20s, I was I was right into hiking or tramping in New Zealand, which is basically, you know, doing overnight, but they have a lot of, they have a hut system in New Zealand, a very good hut system. So I had never had my own tent, you know, and, you know, the whole, the whole backpacking thing. And I really, really got into it. And I thought, right, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to go. I started, you know, as you, as you, as you join up ideas on Instagram and Facebook, you get more and more and more involved. You get more ideas. And, you know, I was seeing lightweight tents and ultra lightweight hiking and um, all this, all these like <laughs> cool things. They're looking at it's all like these people. It's like a whole new world. Like, yeah. I know. And they were all super cool. And I'm going to do that. So, yes. So the, the, the hiking that I had done 25 years earlier was slightly different. You know, the, the gear was a lot heavier and um, and that sort of thing. So I knew what I was doing when I was going out into the into the wilderness. I, I I had a fair idea of what I was doing anyway. However, New Zealand doesn't have snakes and Australia. Oh yes, <laughs> that makes a big I, difference. Scorpions and things like that. Yeah. That's yeah, one thing so that's a little different too on the island of Madeira. We don't have a whole lot of critters here. Like, yeah. you know, like it's so yeah. it's things that you don't have to worry about here that yeah. you would have to worry about, like if you're in Yellowstone or in Yosemite or yeah. something like that. Yeah. yeah. And it's quite funny because everybody says, oh my gosh, you've got so many venomous snakes and, you know, in, uh, in, the, in Australia. And I'm looking at them and going, well, you've got moose, you've got Cougars and the and bears, bears, like <laughs> I mean, I think they're way scarier, you know. Yeah, but, exactly um, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. So how did it? How did it change you? How did you start to feel different about Belinda as you went through this? Um, well, my very first um, multi-day hike, mm-hmm. uh, I I literally 
hadn't even tried my tent. I had done, I hadn't, I had never used a water filter. I just basically got everything, uh, you know, a few days before and, and said, right, I'm going to go on a multi-day hike. I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. So I went on this uh, multi-day hike called the Great Ocean Road, uh, Great Ocean Walk in, 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 um, in Australia. And, uh, and it was, it was just amazing. Um, there were very few people who were allowed to go on the hike each time, um, you know, due to due to numbers. And I can remember just talking to other all the other hikers and 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 just really learning from them. Just really going, uh, you know, I soaked it up like a sponge. Mm. And um, I look back at that person, and it was just every single day having this achievement oh i've you know i can remember when i first put my tent up the very first night and it was actually new year's eve and i put my tent up and and you know and i sat back and i went oh i've just put my tent up like i really did i really did feel like the new kid the new kid at school and you know and I sat there and I looked and and um you know and I got my dehydrated meal and I filled it up with water and not I don't think I even looked on the packet to see that I only had to add it for that little bit of water you know but it was just like and you know and I, and I made mistakes like you know and then you know I, of course I made mistakes but it was fun you know it wasn't like I was going right into the wilderness but it was it was a good entry level hike and and I think that was it. It was just doing little things every day. Yeah. And and that was the whole thing with my makeover as well. Like, you know, the the way that I look at it is if you're going to reinvent yourself or do anything like that, you, you just take baby steps because otherwise you're going to fall down in a heap. You're you know, you know, just one week get something that you're doing every single day and then the next week bring in something else the next week bring in something else and celebrate small victories that yeah those i totally agree with you those tiny little wins really add up and i could relate like when i took off in the rv i didn't know what the heck i was doing you know as a matter of fact the first time i went to set up the to hook up the fresh water hose, I hooked it up to the wrong. And actually there was like a sign that said, do not drink this water. I was like, what am I doing? I was like, wait, <laughs> pay attention. Like, but then once I figured it out and I was like, oh my gosh, I did it. Or, you know, like yeah. the first time I drove from Chicago to St. Louis and I set up the RV, I did the slide out and the hookups and everything. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Yeah. And yeah. you know what? I find that like you, you just figure this stuff out as you go along. You don't have to have everything figured, no matter what it is. I feel like if you're yeah. starting a new job or you're moving to somewhere new, whether it's just down yeah. the street or in another country, or you're starting a new yeah. relationship or ending a relationship, like you don't have to have everything figured out to get started. You just start. Yeah. And then yep, you figure yep. it out. Like you, you take and, advantage of the momentum of that yep. action and then it, it'll carry you or yep. you carry and, you really. Yeah. And you need to be kind to yourself as well. Like, you know, just, it, it's okay. It's okay to make mistakes. It really yep. is okay to make mistakes. I mean, you know, we've all made, some of us have made some humdingers, but. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a, a few humdingers myself. <laughs> And you know, I actually, I don't believe in mistakes. I believe in retakes. So then that way, like that way you're like, okay, yes, I screwed that up, but <laughs> let me start again. Let me figure this out. And yeah. I think that's, what's great too, especially in your forties and fifties and sixties. Okay. You've, you've had a lot of experience to where yeah. you can draw from those experiences. You can, you can draw from old wins, like from victories that you had in your twenties and thirties and yeah. remind yourself like, Oh, that's right. I had three children. I did that. Like that, yeah. you know, like if surely I can drive this damn RV across the country. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So, so tell us about the writing. When did that start? Um, that actually started probably about a year ago. Mm. Um, and it and it took a long time because um, I had a very uh, I had a very nasty breakup 
I, you know, I met somebody with a, uh, I met somebody, um, you know, in the hiking and, you know, I thought that we were going to be, we were going to go into sort of some, you know, retirement together and it was going mm. to be awesome. And then I had to write about all of these hikes and relive the photos and it oh. was really, really hard and I really had to push myself to do that. So, I mean, you know, and luckily, you know, it wasn't like all of my hikes, a lot of my hikes I do solo. Um, but it was, it was so, uh, it really, I really dragged my feet. I, I really dragged my feet. And um, so, uh, I mean, I really wanted this up at the, the blog up and running by last um, January. And mm. yeah, but, but again, be kind to myself. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It's not the end of the world, you know. It really isn't the end of the world. And um, but you know, I used to journal a lot. I used to I used to journal a lot. And this is, it's it's not dissimilar to journaling. And mm-hmm. most of my um, I, I just found myself in a lot of Facebook groups, and people would be asking questions, and I go, well, um, da, 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 and and and. and write this whole big blurb about what they need to do and then I'd have to repeat it for the next person and I thought right okay well you know there's something here I can you know I can write these in-depth guides to how to do this particular hike what you need and whatnot and you know, and then I've just got it written there, and and you know, people can just read that instead of right being, instead of, of having to repeat you know, it over and over again. Yeah. Like, yeah, read exactly. this blog post right here. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of how I feel about podcasting, right? Like, oh, you need to learn yeah. about menopause. Go to episode forty-two and thirty-eight. And, you know, it's like what? Yeah. But you know what, too yeah. the the writing uh, and even the speaking that's it's all very therapeutic. Yeah, yeah. You get to absolutely. tell your story, and it's also connecting someone else else to your story, where they can learn a yeah. lot about themselves. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, uh, I mean, I am sure that that woman who was looking in the mirror that day and going, you know, WTF. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I am sure there's a lot of other women out there who are just yeah. going, oh, my gosh, like, you know, I've been, the kids have drained my energy. The mm. um, menopause, had, menopause hasn't menopause has been kind to me. Mm. Um, is that really my husband over there? Did I yeah. marry that person? Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm sure there's women out there that have that feel that they no longer do things for themselves and to be able to to do these challenges is just it's so you know it's invigorating it's um you know it's something which I you know I just I just feel so good after it It, it, it's it's really is a major dopamine hit it really yeah. is and it's not so much you know sometimes those hikes are hard and sometimes they're scary but finishing one is such a dopamine hit it really is it's such an achievement and I think we all need that you know welcome to a world where midlife is just the beginning this is Wendy Valentine host of the midlife makeover show inviting you to explore my Amazon store a curated collection of all the things I adore. From inspiring books that fuel my soul to nutritional supplements that make menopause the breeze, each item in my store is handpicked to add a touch of joy and ease to your midlife journey. Looking for that perfect skincare product to keep you glowing? Or my best love hair products for bouncy, luscious locks? Dive into my favorites and discover what makes my heart sing. Visit my Amazon store today and treat yourself to a little piece of my world. Because in midlife, it's not just about making over your life. It's about adoring every moment of it. Head over to amazon.wendyvalentine.com to embrace the best years of your life with style, grace, and a touch of fun. Did you have anyone in your life that doubted or questioned what you were doing? Like, what the heck is Belinda doing? 
Well, how do you how do you say in Australia Tram- <laughs> tramping through? Or, is that what you said? Oh, that no, that's New Zealand. New Zealand just oh, say New tramping. Zealand, yeah. It's, it's kind of weird, isn't it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> <of> tramping through. <laughs> yeah. um, well, actually, no, but no. I seem to have a lot of people who are cheering me on from the sidelines. It really is, but I, I don't think a lot of people realise that. When I said, right, I'm going to do a blog, I think everyone thought, oh, just some sort of random, you know, website where she writes a few stories. I don't think they actually realised that I would, you know, write an e-book, that I would have, you know, all of my guides, that I would, you know, suddenly, suddenly start doing podcasts, that I would, you know, turn it into a business or, or something that I actually really enjoy doing, you know. Because I'm to too show old. That you, you, yeah, you just don't know where something will lead either. Yeah. Right? yeah. Like if you just, you take that first step and then another and another, and then it's like, oh, look, this over here. Like now I can do this. And it's amazing. It's amazing yeah. what your life can become and, and how the stars will align even when you don't realize that they're aligning. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's actually quite amusing, actually, yeah. when um, when the stars do align and you're fighting it and you're going, no, 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 and then you yeah. suddenly realise, why was I fighting that? Like, um, it's, you know, things happen for a reason. They really do. And, you know, your life can unfold um, yeah. in a completely different direction than what you expected. But mm. that's not a bad thing, you know? No, I know, right? Uh, what what yeah. were your what were some of your greatest fears as you're out there on the trails besides um, the snakes? <laughs> well, I'm actually not scared of snakes. <laughs> I'm more, I have a I have a bird phobia. <laughs> a bird phobia. A bird, oh a bird phobia. Yeah. Um, I think one of my um, one of my fears when I'm in Australia is potential fire danger because of our mm-hmm. fires. Um, that that is always kind of like a, a, a in the back of my mind. Um, but but that but that's fine because I you know have a you know a, a, a either a, a communication device or a PLB. Um, but also if I injure myself because you know as we get older we take a lot longer to heal. You know if I break a leg. You know, and a twenty-year-old breaks a leg. I mean, you know, our our you know time to heal is just so different, and so that that scares me a little bit. Well, not scares me, but I just because I am a little bit clumsy, and sometimes I do stumble and fall. Like I think I fall over almost once, at least once every hike. <laughs> um, and um, I think when. I, I like, you know, people say, well, aren't you scared out there? Well, what am I scared of? Because the way that I look at it, if you've got sort of, you know, some creep who's going to prey on women, mm-hmm. first of all, I just think I'm too old and ugly. Uh, you know, you kind of like we get to that stage where it's just like, but also if someone's going to prey prey on other humans they're going to do it in a city or or a or, or a you know a town where mm-hmm. there's a lot more to choose from nobody's going to go out into the middle of nowhere to, in the hopes that they find someone to prey on you know they yeah that'd be way too much work for them to do that exactly exactly so um i think i think my main fear is injury um i'm no longer scared of bears um and I've woken up to bear scat outside of my tent in America. And I was like, oh, oh, a bear. <laughs> you know, I have to work on that fear because I am scared. <laughs> it's weird because I, I'm i not, I don't know. I, I feel like if there was a bear like around the corner and it was like, ah, I'd be like, ah. Because it's, and you get conflicting information from the rangers or like sometimes yeah. they say, oh, yell at them. Then they say, be quiet, back way, no, go this way. And I'm like, oh, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. Like, so in some ways I would want to encounter one just so that I can go, okay, now I know what to do. Now yeah. I know it's not so scary. Right. Cause when I, I think yeah. some, when I was in, uh, maybe it was Yosemite, no, it was it Yellowstone? That was right. when one of the mama bears had her cub and they're like yeah. extra protective. And so I was just, and then they said like to make noise because then that makes them, you know, stay away. So I was literally yeah. just 
singing and yelling the whole time I was hiking. I was exhausted. Just because <laughs> God, I'm like, I can't take this. This is too strong. Yeah. And then yeah. finally I thought, well, whatever. You know, I can, yeah. can't make this hiking yeah. experience stressful. It's just not good. Yeah. Well, the way that I look at it is if something happens to me out there and, you know, you know, and mm-hmm. you know, I I'm you know, I meet my maker or whatever, you know, and out out there, at least I'm I've, I've yeah. gone doing something I enjoy, you know. I would mm. rather do that than run over by a bus. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, so do you do or, any type of excursions? Like you'll gather women together and you'll do a hiking event? Um, I have um, I have done one in the past um, and I probably don't anymore, but I have a group of women um, there called my Kokoda tribe. So in, in Australia, we have this, uh, on the Gold Coast, we have this challenge, which is each year and you have to do um, 40, either 48 kilometers or 96 kilometers within a 39 hour period. And it's, oh, wow. it's, it, yeah. And it's in, it's in, um, it's, uh, it's basically has, has a lot to do with the Kokoda uh, track, which um, uh, our diggers did, um, you know, the, the soldiers in World War II and they mm. effectively um, uh, kept the Japanese way. So, I've got this group of women and uh, they would be my hiking buddies. They really would be. And we are this tight, you know, it wow. really is something. And, and you know, we, we're all so totally different, um, but we all have this, you know, bit training for six weeks and um, six months and then doing this challenge where we had to walk 48 kilometres. We did it in uh, we did it in 13 hours, I think, you know, all through the night. It was exhausting. It was absolutely wow. exhausting. But, that, but that's the whole thing about that. And you can't be more than um, a certain amount of um, – a certain amount of distance away and because you've got to be supporting each other because that's what our soldiers did on that Kokoda trek in Papua New Guinea um, during World War II. And, and you you know, so it's something that um, that people on the Gold Coast, it's, a, it's probably Australia's hardest challenge. And they are the people that I would, uh, yeah, they're my Kokoda tribe. That's so, I love so, it. Well, yeah, you end up attracting a new tribe, right? When you venture out yeah. to do things in life. Ex- exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Wow. But I, I, I must say, it is. I, I do like hiking with somebody else. Yeah. You know, hiking on your own is good. Yep. But uh, and I don't mind my own company, so I'm fine. You know, mm-hmm. um, but also when you're hiking by yourself, you know, you get to choose when you stop you get to choose all yeah. these you know so all these hikes that I'm going to do in Europe this year is going to be really um they're all going to be solo which is going to be great you better come to Madeira <laughs> <laughs> I really have my eye on that on that hike it just looks amazing it yeah Madeira really has does. some awesome hikes it's so pretty here and next, yeah. I was going to do the Camino de Santiago this year, but since I've got the book coming out and there's so much that goes into it, I'm going to yeah. have to wait. I'll, I'm going to walk the Camino next year. Have you walked the Camino yet? No, no, I haven't. I've got my eye this summer on um, on the Kungsleden in Sweden. Ooh. Yeah. So that is a month. That's a whole month. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. So that's that's one of them, and possibly the AV one, which is in the Dolomites. Mm. Yeah. So and that's a great thing is that you don't really have to plan. You can just go. All oh, right. Okay. Which which one am I going to do next? You know. Yes. So, uh, because I I camp. I wild camp. I don't I don't stay in huts. It's not my. I prefer to wild camp. Hmm. Yes, wild camping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask the question, which everyone is probably thinking, then how do you go to the bathroom? How do you do all the things when you're out? And I mean, yeah. How? Okay. Okay. So how do you stay clean? (laughs) Okay. So I think I'm probably one of the cleanest hikers. I do my laundry every night. So, and I'm, yes, yes, yes. So I have a little dog bowl. 
a collapsible dog bowl uh, made out of Dyneema. So it's like weighs like, you know, one ounce or whatever. And and then I I wash myself every mm. night, you know, you know, obviously not full body, but um, you know, where it counts. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and then I will wash my underpants and my socks and my cooler cloth. Mm. Yeah. So your cooler cloth is like your pea cloth. And you just yeah. and just hang the stuff up to dry overnight and then it's ready yeah. by morning. Yeah, it's funny. But I, Here it I, is. I, uh-huh, go ahead. I carry th- I have three pairs of socks and three pairs of underpants. And and I would do this every night. And a lot of people don't. They wear the same socks all the time. And it's so bad for your feet. And yes. I just I just like to be fresh. So when I get into my sleepy bag at night, you know, I've got a clean, you know, clean downstairs, clean upstairs, and you know, and I feel so much better at putting on clean socks and underpants. So yeah. yeah. And here yeah. it is. I think I'm so cool because I actually hung up my um, all of my laundry today outside on the balcony because we don't have a wash. I mean, a, we have a washer, a washing machine here yeah. in the apartment in Portugal, but we don't have a dryer. And I literally was like, wow, look at me. I was hung up my clothes <laughs> on the balcony. Like, silly. And here you yeah. are. You're like scrubbing your panties at night. <laughs> I mean, I do have, I do have ultra, you know, um, you know, underpants that literally dry in, you know, 15, 15 minutes. I mean, everything's just so quick dry and all that yeah. sort of thing, apart from my, apart from my socks, but it doesn't And, and what about going, yeah. what about going poo? Uh, okay. So yes, I go into that quite detail of one of my blog posts (laughs) actually I do and there is a method to it but one of the main things that I think it's really important for people to be able to do is to squat and I actually reference um, Peter Fisher Um, she's like this um, amazing woman who gets right who's who's her thing is movement and getting people to move once they're once they you know once they stop being elastic, uh, you know, an elastic, you know, twenty-year-old, you know, you, you you start to seize up. And so she's yep. right. And so she has a free course on her website, and I'll put, um, I'll, I'll give you the details after on how to squat, which is so important for people our age, especially when you're going to you're going to need to squat to to get down with your grandchildren yeah. to mm-hmm. pick things up when you get older all that sort of thing squatting is really really important and I think part of the problem is is that when you are going to the toilet when you are out is that you a lot of people can't get down and squat and mm-hmm. or they're a bit nervous about somebody seeing them and yeah. so they don't um possibly Potentially, they don't empty their bladder properly because they're in a hurry, you know, and 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 you get a lot. And I always carry urals, which are a um, urinary alkalizer, um, in my mm-hmm. my first aid, and I am always handing them out to you know to to women. But it's being able to squat and being able to is is really important, and it's it's like a a, a thing. But the whole thing is is that. When you do it, you really need to, you need to dig a hole and um, you pack your toilet paper out and it's not it's not dirty. You just stick it in a in a in a doggy poo bag and you put it in the in the next bulk toilet or the next toilet that you that you come to. It's 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 it, it is what it is. You know, it's like fascinating. The way that- I mean, I mean, did you ever think that like when you were looking at that Belinda back in twenty twenty? <laughs> That that Belinda would someday be on a podcast talking about what to do with your poo. I know, I know, and and that Belinda used to stay in high in five star hotels. So. <laughs> So that's hilarious, but uh, and I think it's really important for for leave no trace trace principles, you know, and it really it really is, and I'm such an advocate for that. I mean, it's it just it it's just horrible when you see people's toilet paper and human waste on the trail. It's just like. Yes. How oh, I know. You, I hate that. How yeah. could you? How could you do that to not uh, not just everybody else, but the wildlife? It's yes. just oh. You know, exactly. 
Yeah, so I go I go into that. There's a there is a um, uh, there is um, a, a blog post where I go into that in quite a lot of detail, including how to use a female urinate, urinate, urination device, which ha- allows you to pee standing up. Um, and wow. that's, for me, the for, things for me, that they can come up with now. Oh, oh they also have um, um, back um, out, outdoor bidets, so you can actually screw wow. a little thing onto a water uh, onto a onto a water bottle. So wow. you know, yeah, backcountry bidet. Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting because <laughs> I thought about. Um, so before I started RVing, I thought about all the places I wanted to see just in the United States, right? Like going to, you know, Glacier and Yellowstone and Yosemite yeah. and Shasta and all the places, right? And if you were to have to try to take time off of work to save up the money to fly to each one of those places, like you would never get to go and see all those places. And then yeah. that was one of the, you know, what really inspired me to to buy an RV so that I could go and explore and see all those places. Mm -hmm. And of course, with RVing, usually comes walking and hiking. And I feel like when you hike in the world, you, it's a totally different perspective. You're getting to really see more of the world. It's so much different than flying into Italy or something like that. And you stay in a fancy hotel and not that I wouldn't do that. Right. But (laughs) there's the other part where you're hiking in Italy. You're really, and you're meeting more people that way. You're you're going slower. You're getting to stop and smell the roses. It's such a different, more enriching experience. Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, and sometimes when I'm out there, I might go, wow, you know, like, how many other people know about this particular spot where I'm standing? And 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 the reality is, is there are so many people that would never get to experience that 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 vista, you know. And um, you know, and, mm. and I go into that in my book how important you know looking um, health and well being and being being in nature, um, you know, what it does to particular parts of your brain and how that makes you feel so much better. And, um, you know, a lot of people say, oh, yeah, just take a walk in nature. It's really good for you. But I'm really into telling them why it's good for you. And, and mm. that's, you know, when I go into uh, I go into health, I say, well, yes, it's good to hydrate. Yep. Okay. Everyone knows it's good to hydrate. Why is it good to hydrate? Well, it's good to hydrate because of, you know, and I give I give all these reasons um, from a, um, you know, from a physical point of view of what's actually happening in the cells of your body when you do hydrate and what happens when you don't. And all of a sudden you go, oh, okay, I understand why this is so important. So I'm I'm right into say telling the why you know and and it goes back to toileting as well why we toilet that way you know right. the safety why we do, why we do it this particular way and um and health like health on the trail why sleeping is so important and that's one of the reasons why mm-hmm. I don't I don't like huts um, because I can't sleep with other people in the room unless yeah. they're my partner and my children. Um, and so I, I don't have a very good sleep. And, you know, we all know that lack of sleep is really bad for you, but lack of sleep when you're hiking um, yes. you know, is really actually quite dangerous. So Yeah, yeah. you want to feel well-rested when you go on that the next hike in the morning. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so, so tell us more about the book. What's the name of the book and how do we okay. go about getting it and all that good stuff? Okay, so it's called Hike It Right, and it's health, hygiene, and safety on the trail. And it's just the basic, it's the basics, you know. Mm. And But I go in, as I said, I go into the why. I go into hand sanitizer. Everyone knows how you put a bit of hand sanitizer. But do you really know how it works? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so hand yeah, sanitizer I don't. actually breaks down the protein of the uh, of the um, you uh-huh. know the germ molecules, and that is why you need to do it. It's not something fun that we all you know did do you know can 
you continue to do after COVID, it it, it does actually you know have a, a you know have a role. And so I go into everything in a lot of detail, which I hope explains the why, you know, and why electrolytes are good for you, why the you know potassium, magnesium, and sodium, why they're good for you, um, and those are those little electrolyte tabs that you can that you can take and how that will enhance you yeah I would think that having all of this knowledge and eventually it being wisdom it makes the journey of the hike more enjoyable because you're not stressed about all of those basics Mm. that you're like oh I know how (laughs) to do that I know how to yeah. And set up my tent and, and, and sure, just like we were saying earlier in the beginning, you're trying to figure things out and you may not know how to do it. That might be stressful, but eventually you figure it out and it becomes yeah. nature. And yeah, nature. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. And so, and, I'm, <laughs> and as I said to you, I'm very, um, uh, I'm very kind of blunt in my, in my, you know, my, uh, expl- expl- <laughs> sorry, <laughs> explanations about you know X, Y, and Z. So you know if, if you're, you know, I, you know, I tell you how to use a, a female urina- urination device. This is how you use it. <laughs> you know, like because a lot of people would have no idea. You know, and and I looked online, and it's like everybody's too scared to talk about it. Well, you know, it, it's a thing. No. It's, it's the same way as like they, you know, we all used to be scared to talk about menopause and now we're talking about menopause. We won't <laughs> shut up about it. <laughs> like, all right, enough about the menopause. Like, yeah. Yeah. So when does, no, when, I, does your, when does your book come out? Okay. So um, it'll be um, on the 30th of June. Nice. So oh, great. Yes. Yeah. And today, mm-hmm. today is July 1st. So it's available now. And yes. then, um, and then I will just leave a link in the show notes for you guys so that you can yep. actually download the book, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so, for all your readers, it's um, giving it away free for you know oh, nice. anybody who's interested because you know I just want I I want to spread the word. <laughs> Yeah. And this is such a good time of year to do this because it's summer. It's a great yeah. opportunity mm. to get out there in nature. And I can't remember yeah. what this is called. It's a Japanese term. Is it Shinrin Yoku? Is that right? What that means? Forest bathing? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. I yep. think it's called yep. Shinrin Yoku. Not that I'm, I'm sure I'm not <laughs> pronouncing it correctly. <laughs> Um, but it's so good for you to be out there in nature. It's so healthy to do that. Mm. And whether you just do like a little hike or, I mean, like when you first yeah. started out, like you didn't go you know, climb Mount Everest or anything like that. I mean, Ab- just get out there in not. nature. Yeah. Ba- baby, ba- baby steps, you know, baby mm-hmm. steps, you know, and, you know, it, it's just so easy for us to all get stuck inside a house, you know, and especially, you know, especially as a lot of us are working from home, um, it, it is, it, it, it's, it, it almost seems like it's a little bit more difficult for people to sort yes. of get out because they tend to sort of, you know, you know, lays in their gym jams, you know, from, yeah, from the bottom, from the bottom down. I know. Yeah. <laughs> That was one of the reasons I really liked Portugal and even Arvine, but it's because well, here they call it the, the land of eternal spring. So it's always like 70, oh. deg- 70 degrees year round. Wow. So you can be outside a lot. I love it. And then even with RV life, you, you tend to be, cause I mean, the RV is pretty small. So you tend to sit outside a lot. You meet neighbors. Oh my God. The, yeah. people, the people I have met in the last few years has just been yeah. absolutely fascinating. Yeah, yeah, ab- absolutely. And the other thing is, is we're talking about, you know, getting up, you know, when the sun rises and going to sleep when the sun goes down. I mean, yes. that really is so good for your circadian rhythms, you know, it really is. And that's so, so important. So Yeah, I have found yeah. like I don't even need an alarm anymore. I just like I'll naturally yeah. wake up when I'm supposed to wake up and then yeah. I'll go but I'm supposed to go to sleep, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Wow, thank you so much. <laughs> this has been great. I can't, we've got to 
We got to go hiking together. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, Madeira's on my on my list. It's on, it's on the list, not the bucket list. On the on list. The, you know? On the list. <laughs> it's on the list. list. It's on the yeah. list. Yeah. So, so where can we find you? Okay, so um, the website, which is Soul Treader. Um, my website is is Soul Treader, which is S O U L T R E A D. E-R. And I also have um, Instagram and Facebook, which we will put in the show notes. Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much. I love it. <laughs> I love having different shows like this. Besides, you know, I love talking about everything midlife, but yeah. especially these where it's so <laughs> unique and a woman that's so brave to get out there by yourself and do that. I think it's fascinating. <laughs> yeah. Love it, love it. Uh, well, hopefully I'll see you on the trail, girl. Right. Okay. Yeah, you bet. <laughs> Thank you so much, Wendy. It's been awesome. Thank you. Did this podcast inspire you, challenge you, trigger you to make a change or spit out your coffee laughing? Good. Then there are three ways you can thank me. Number one, you can leave a written review of this podcast on Apple iTunes. Number two, you can take a screenshot of the episode and share it on the social media and tag me, Wendy Valentine. Number three, share it with another midlifer that needs a makeover. You know who I'm talking about. Thank you so much for listening to the show. Get out there and be bold, be free, be you. Be you.